What's up guys, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you can catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so lately I've been doing some work on a different playlist and you know, time to time I'll kind of clean them up and move some to the front page that are easier to find for the stuff that people are asking about right now. And throughout that process, I noticed that we haven't been talking much about Infinity War. And it hasn't been for any lack of interest. It was mainly because I wanted to get a jump on the Black Panther videos, which are still coming, that's not going to stop. And the same with Dark Knight's Metal and DC Rebirth, we'll continue those as well too. But with Infinity War coming out like a month after Black Panther, there's a few topics on that that I wanted to discuss as well. And one of the main things with this that I've been thinking about is, well, you know that usually Marvel with their movies, they'll have an event and they'll take multiple events and mix them together for the film. And just curious, because I'm gonna have a poll pop up right here. I wanna know how many of you guys like that and how many of you don't like that. Because I love hearing you guys feedback on stuff like this. Because me personally, I like that they do it because it's really like their method of telling the story but not giving the whole thing away. And really the most recent example is Thor Ragnarok because that film was a gumbo of a number of different things. But with them choosing that method of delivery, it tells us, okay, what's the main thing that's gonna happen? But along the way, we really don't know even with reading the comics. And I feel like Infinity War is gonna be pretty much the same thing. And I'm not by any means saying I'm the first person to think this because there's countless people online saying it's gonna be a mixture of the Infinity War comics and Thanos Quest or the original Secret Wars from 1984. And I wish it did take from the newer Secret Wars in 2004 with Black Panther using the Infinity Gauntlet on Doom and Reed Richards coming back, but even more so the huge involvement that Molecule Man had in that whole story arc. And with the huge additions that Marvel has coming up, like your Fantastic Four and all the X-Men, somebody like Molecule Man could be a huge part of making that work together. And I really feel like that'll work best in a film that takes place in an earlier space and time, kind of like how the Captain Marvel movie's doing by taking place in the 90s, but that's something for a whole nother video. But what I mostly want to focus on here is that I believe that Infinity War will also take pieces from an event called Time Runs Out. And in my opinion, from the films we had leading up to it, uh, especially Captain America Civil War, but with the films we had lead up to the Infinity War film, with the combination of really just the trailers that we've seen for Infinity War so far, collectively as a whole, it looks like Infinity War is pulling the most from this event. And it also does that with the support of its previous films following suit. And most notably out of the previous films, I'd have to say Captain America Civil War, which for the most part did reflect the Civil War event in the comics. With the exception of actual mutants being a part of the registration act. But much like Civil War, Time Runs Out also gave you a bunch of heroes versus heroes. But on top of that, even more specifically, it also gave us another Captain America versus Iron Man. But in this case, they were put at odds many issues before because of the whole situation with the Illuminati and Captain America pretty much declaring Tony Stark and the Illuminati to be his enemies. And it's a very similar situation to what we see in the films because Captain America in the films, he's also in a place where he feels a sense of betrayal. And it's not like here in the comics where he had his memory wiped for the decision he made that went against the Illuminati, but in the films, it was more so like he was marooned for the decision he made that went against S.H.I.E.L.D. A totally different circumstance, but the same principle applies. And that's one of the things that I don't mind when they change stuff in the films, because I'm all for the change up in the retelling of these stories, but when you do it, just make sure that the principle stays the same. Because when you change the principles, then you start to lose your characters. And it kind of feels like that's where DC is going right now, but with the talks of them changing stuff up, we'll have to see what happens with that. But also in your Time Runs Out event, you had your invasion of Wakanda, which we also know for a fact is gonna happen in Infinity War. And for those of you who aren't too familiar with the Time Runs Out event, I'll just give you a hint. It didn't end well. And I think it's pretty safe to say that at this point in the films, the Cabal or the Children of Thanos will be going to Wakanda in order to get the last stone we haven't seen yet, which is the Soul Stone. And I believe really that's what that whole last battle is gonna be about. And it is possible that the Soul Stone could be revealed in the Black Panther movie, but at this point we really don't know because much like I said before, the film will take the exact same scene from the comics and throw it in a whole different event with the addition of changing a couple characters here and there. But just to let some of you guys know, and also as a refresher to some of you guys who already read Time Runs Out, when the Cabal took Wakanda, they were at the time in search of Infinity Gem, but the Necropolis soon became a peak area of interest. And that's because at that time, the Illuminati was hiding a number of weapons or these pillars that were designed to destroy other universes in hopes of avoiding the inevitable. And in the trailer, we see Thanos bring his pillars to Wakanda, which are way bigger, but at this point, we don't know what purpose they serve. And it's more likely the ones in the film will tie more directly into him finding the stone and what he plans to do with it after, which most likely both have to do with the destruction of Wakanda. And trust me, I don't want that to happen either. But it would make sense that one of the easiest ways to find an Infinity Stone is to blow up everything around it and let it be the last thing remaining. And it's very possible we may see a similar turn of events in the film. 
but in the film, rather than them hiding these weapons in the necropolis, it's very likely that that's where they'll find the soul stone. Because we do know in order for it to be an Infinity War film, Thanos has to succeed at getting all the Infinity Stones, whether it happens in Infinity War or even in Avengers 4. And if these events play out this way, or at least close to it, it'll also explain why we don't see Shuri in the Infinity War trailer. Most notably, where we see everybody in Wakanda running into battle. And because of the type of person that Shuri is, she would have been the first one out there. And even though she wasn't in the trailer, we do know for sure that she is in the movie. But my guess is, much like In Time Runs Out, she'll find herself in a situation where she's isolated with members of the Cabal, and in the film she'll either be killed, or like in the comics, she'll be trapped in a prison that is much like death. And that's what happened to her in the Time Runs Out event. Because shortly after her and T'Challa escape an encounter with Proxima Midnight, T'Challa informs Reed that him and Shuri will be coming in soon. But instead of leaving with T'Challa and meeting with Reed Richards, she tells him that she's gonna stay behind and fight. And not just that, but she orders him to leave while she stays behind. And at this time, Shuri was the ruler of Wakanda, so she could order her brother to do that. But if I had to guess, since that's not the case in the films, she'll more than likely be isolated, working on some new type of weapon, and she'll have to use that weapon in her defense until her seemingly death. But jumping forward to Volume 6 of Black Panther, which is the most recent, we see Shuri still in this stasis of living death and T'Challa doing all that he can to bring her back. And eventually she will come back about 5 or 6 issues later, but with this being the aftermath of what happened in Time Runs Out, it's very possible that when the Cabal invades Wakanda in the Infinity War film, that this could be her fate in the film as well. Because we all know somebody gonna die in this movie. It could be indefinite, it can be permanent, we don't know. All that we know for sure is gonna be one of those films where the villains are winning. But at the time of Shuri's death, T'Challa had already been given the mantle of King of the Dead. Bass granted him this power, and it was really how he was able to be Black Panther and Shuri also be Black Panther at the same time. And even then, he wasn't able to bring her back until he got the help of Eden Fisi. And this also takes place after the Time Runs Out event, and it'll be something we'll probably see in Black Panther 2. But what I think needs to be cleared up in the films before they even go that far, and that's to answer the question if he's King of the Dead now in the MCU, or is that something that he'll become later on? And once again, this video is going up before the Black Panther film. They may answer it in that film and we won't have to worry about it. But with the fact that the MCU hasn't had a Doom War event, for obvious reasons, not to say that there'll never be one in the future, but because the MCU hasn't had a Doom War event and Shuri hasn't taken the throne, which I don't think they'll do in the films, at least not anytime soon, because T'Challa's The Black Panther is still fairly new to the MCU. But because neither one of these events have happened, and they're both events that led to T'Challa becoming the King of the Dead in the comics, I feel like the films need to do what they do best and find a way to give us a definite answer so we know as an audience going forward, is this a thing that may happen? Is this something that has already happened? because I believe it's critical to his character going into future films. Because in Civil War, he has been Black Panther for a while and he's new to being king. And from what we can tell at this point, being king of anything is just brand new to him altogether. And going into the Black Panther film, Chadwick Boseman has already stated that figuring out how to be king is really what this chapter is about in T'Challa's life. And so now, when it comes to Infinity War, we know that Wakanda is going to play a pretty big role, clearly. It's where the big battle takes place, it's possibly where the Soul Stone is. <laughs> Man, at this point, it's definitely where the Soul Stone is. Is. but in the series time runs out this location was frequently visited also because this is the location where the illuminati began like before the group even had a name they met in wakanda proposed the idea to black panther and at the time he declined the offer and i won't spend too much time on that i'll just leave a link in the description or you can click the one that pops up here on the screen to check that out but the next thing i want to talk about that we also see in time runs out and it looks like we're going to see in infinity war is thor's new hammer and so in the comics as a result of the events that took place in original sin thor became unworthy and was no longer able to lift Mjolnir. But in Time Runs Out, he gets another hammer. And the way this happened, now bear with me, because we finna talk about another dead body of somebody that we did not see in the trailer. And you can relax, because it's not Scott Lang. He didn't die here. But rather, this was Hank Pym. And he was done dirty, man. He got snuck up on behind from an adaptoid, and it was a wrap after that. But when the body of Hank Pym was found at Times Square and S.H.I.E.L.D. was sent over there to investigate, they ran into a different version of the Avengers that were there that were saved from the 14325 universe. And they were only there in the 616 universe because they were saved by AIM of the 616 universe who saved their lives from an incursion of their planet. But the Thor that was from that Earth, he was a Thor with two R's. And I don't know if that's a direct connection to the Journey into Mystery issue where Thor had two R's, but either way, this Thor from that alternate universe, his hammer stated, whosoever holds this hammer, if he be unworthy then he shall possess the power of Thor and so when he dropped his hammer and 616 Thor got his hands on it it was finders keepers and I'm not saying all of this is exactly how it will go down but I do believe that much like time runs out 
Thor will be getting a new hammer. And there's been speculation whether it will look just like Mjolnir, or if the Russo brothers are going to take the different route and go more of the 1610 Ultimates universe, because we've seen those images online for quite some time too. And I'm not going to lie, I would personally like that route more, just to see something different, you know, have it change up a little bit. But that's going to do it for this one guys, and let me know down in the comments, have you read Time Runs Out? And if so, chime in and let me know what you think because personally, I feel like there's too many things that are taken directly from this story event that was designed to lead up to the incursion into Secret War, just for it to be some coincidence that Marvel's using just for right now. And I say that for one, because they have their movies planned out years ahead. While most people are just thinking of the 18, 20 movies that lead into Infinity War, I believe that Marvel's already put it into pieces now to set up for the next event. And with Time Runs Out specifically ending with the incursion, it's the perfect opportunity to have your character turn around, be like, who are these guys? And it not just be the Guardians of the Galaxy, but members of the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. And we know for a fact that it's the Guardians that Thor's talking to in that scene. At least that's the way it's cut in the trailer, because trailers always cut it the way it's in the movie, right? Right. But last thing, also let me know your guys' thoughts on the invasion of Wakanda. Because we know for trailers it's going to be the Outriders, and we know Call Obsidian's going to be in the film. But will we get that epic fight between him and Black Panther? That's the question. Because if we do, this will probably be the closest fighting style matchup that we'll get so far in comparison to like your Hulk versus Wolverine. And that's not to say that Cole is as strong as Hulk, but just his size versus Black Panther's quickness. But that's really it, guys. Got links so you can check out my other videos. Got much more on Infinity War coming in the near future. And I'll see you guys next time. Squad up.